distinct methods that uh, nonprofit organizations may choose from, and we'd like you to understand what's right for your organization. In order to do that, we'd like to take a look at how the uh, two different methods of accounting impact your income statement or your profit and loss statement, statement of financial activities, however you call that document, um, and your balance sheet, your long-term financial history over time. We'll begin to dig in by taking a look at some examples of how you would look at things differently from a cash accounting perspective versus an accrual accounting perspective. The first key difference between cash versus accrual accounting is when we consider an expense to actually have taken place or when income is to be recorded, called uh, hitting the books. When are you actually going to book income? When do you record that that income has come in? And when do you book an expense? When do you record in your system that you've uh, incurred an expense or paid an expense? In cash accounting, you recognize an expense or an amount of income when you actually get the funds or when you actually pay a bill. Very much like your checking account, and we'll look at that example in a moment. Um, but the accrual system recognizes income and expenses as soon as you have an obligation recorded. So we'll take a look at some specific examples, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the cash has transacted yet. Just that you know it's going to, so you write down the information and start planning immediately for what it means when that expense or income actually does occur and transact. So let's take a look at an example using a grant award letter and cash versus accrual accounting. Uh, under the cash system, you would record that grant award when the check actually arrives. When you open the mail and your grant check is there, you'll take it down to the bank and deposit it, and that's when you recognize your income. Uh, you may be aware that the income was going to be there sooner, but it doesn't show up on your financial statements until you actually deposit the check. Under the accrual system, however, as soon as you receive an unconditional promise to give, in this case something like an award letter, you record it as income even though there is not cash yet transacted. But it records for your system and you know that you have income that is going to be available for your organization. Another example or different way to think about cash versus accrual is something like uh, theater season ticket sales. In the cash accounting system, you record that cash as soon as it's received. So even though a patron may be buying tickets to shows that don't happen for months, you record all that income as cash right away, and that's when it's received whenever those tickets are actually paid for. However, under the accrual system, you're going to book that income uh, when you know it's an unconditional promise to give, they've paid for the tickets, but you're actually not going to show the cash as available until the show is performed when the income is earned. So we know that that money is going to come, but we don't actually book it as cash yet, different from how you might do it in cash accounting. Looking at the example of a clinic patient uh, is another way of thinking about when do you record income from a, a source when it's cash versus accrual. Uh, if that patient has a copay and they pay you the day that they come in, that is recorded as cash the time that it's there. Um, if they don't pay you until later, then that um, debt is not actually recorded to the organization until the cash shows up. Under the accrual system, though, you book that income when that service is provided, when the income is earned, even if that copay isn't made then or that insurance payment doesn't come until later. You still have the recognition that you've earned some income, even though the cash from that income may not record to your system until later on. Whenever you begin using an accounting system, you have to select one method or the other, cash or accrual, in making a decision about how you talk about your finances. So what's the best thing for your organization and how you choose which system to use? Cash accounting is really best used for smaller organizations that are a little less complex. So your grants may be very small and short term. You'll use all the cash the year that you get it. Um, you may have some unrestricted individual contributions that you can just record as they come in. Um, some simple fees for service. You're not booking a lot of uh, income from the future, but rather just things that are paid as you go. Uh, you may have just a few capital assets, but probably not big things like buildings or vehicles. Uh, so, you know, desks and computers, but, but perhaps not more than that. And in an organization that may select cash, you probably don't want to have an annual audit as a requirement. In the state of Minnesota, audits are required for any organization larger than $750,000. And if you don't regularly do an audit, then cash becomes more of an option. 
However, under the accrual system, um, there's really great times when you're going to want to be sure to use this. Uh, it helps substantially with understanding your grants when they have different terms, a multiple year grant or restrictions on grants. If you regularly receive restricted giving, where a donor gives you uh, access to some funds, but they only want to pay for one type of program or one type of service, uh, then the accrual method really helps uh, understand and track that better. Also, if your pledges come in from individuals over time instead of just in one lump sum, if you get multi-year pledges, accrual is certainly a very helpful way of understanding the impact for your organization. If you are regularly receiving government contracts where they're going to um, understand exactly the impact of what they're doing, they're going to want to see uh, some reports back more in an accrual basis than cash usually. Uh, certainly, if you are invoicing for a lot of services and not getting paid for some regular amount of time, if it takes a little while to actually get paid for what you do, uh, the accrual system is going to work better to understand your total financial position. Uh, again, I mentioned those restricted grants. You're going to want to make sure that you're thinking about the accrual system if you need to restrict money. And what's a material amount of capital assets for you? That'll change organization to organization, but again, anything more complex than owning a computer, and you really may want to think about the accrual system, it really helps understand depreciation, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. And of course, if you have an annual audit that is required, the accrual system is something that really works better for almost any organization. Once you've chosen your method, your income statement, uh, your profit and loss statement, whatever you call that document, is going to look different depending on which selection you made. So let's take a look at some examples of what it looks like on the income statement. So here's a sample income statement from a fictional organization. What we don't see here is, is this a cash accounting statement or an accrual accounting statement? We're going to treat this as accrual, but I want to be careful to point out that we don't know exactly when some of this income and revenue has been generated versus when it was received just from looking at this statement. So it's important to understand, is this cash or is this accrual? Because we're looking at revenue that's been contributed or, or fees that have been earned, but we're not sure yet how much of that is cash. We're going to see that on the balance sheet in just a moment. Similarly, from the income side, we have several expenses that have been recorded, but we don't know just yet which of these expenses have already been paid and which have been accrued, which is to say we know we're going to have to pay them, but we haven't sent the cash out yet. So we're going to need to see the balance sheet to understand how much has already been paid versus what's just been incurred as an expense. We do want to point out a couple of items on the expense side of this particularly though. We have our interest expense line and our depreciation expense lines. Uh, these are things that look different under cash and accrual, so it's very important to understand that uh, when you have a cash-based system and you're paying off a debt, you're going to record principal and interest payments completely through one uh, expense statement. Uh, but if you're using accrual accounting, you're going to incur an expense for the use of the interest but not the principal piece. That's not going to show up here as an expense. That's going to come in the balance statement that we're going to look at in just a moment. Uh, so you'll see different types of recording for different systems. Also under depreciation, when we talked about whether you had a substantial amount of capital assets here, uh, whether you're going to record the loss of value under those assets uh, is really important to this accrual decision. It shows the impact of a future choice, not actually cash leaving. So under a cash statement, you probably wouldn't see a depreciation light on them, but under accrual, you will. Understanding what the income statement looks like is certainly helpful, but now we really need to take a look at the balance sheet to get the full picture of cash versus accrual accounting. This is our sample balance sheet for the same organization in the same period of time. But looking at this under the assets category, we can already tell that we're using an accrual based system here because we're recording assets that haven't been received yet. Uh, when you look at the list of current assets, the first thing is cash and investments, and that's a pretty normal uh, place to see where the liquid assets of an organization are, what's already here. But right under that, we have accounts receivable, grants receivable, pledges receivable. That means that we've booked those incomes. We know they're going to be here, but they're not yet cash. Until they actually arrive, they don't count as cash. So we see them as current assets that will become cash soon, but we're planning to have them come in and they're not here yet. We recorded them on the income statement as income already, but here's where we can tell whether or not it's been received or whether it's booked out there. 
So we take a look at those, we can see some long-term assets for this organization. And here's again where we can look at the impact of depreciation. This organization has a building improvements, a five-year lease where they paid for some changes to their leased space. So they paid $8,000 for that. They've had $14,000 with the furniture and equipment. But we have this negative line on that asset of accumulating depreciation, losing the value of those things. And here's where accrual accounting really helps us understand, uh, yeah, at one point we had $8,000 worth of improvements, and at one point we had $14,000 worth of equipment. But as we use them, things break down and wear out over time, and we need to recognize that there's a loss of value there that we may have to plan to replace in the future. The cash system isn't thinking so much about what you might have to spend in the future, but the accrual-based system under this depreciation line helps us do a better job of planning to understand what might we need to kick out. So just like we have long-term assets and, um, and short-term assets, we also have liabilities for this organization, and this helps us see what has already been paid and what is still out there to be paid. So all the expenses that we looked at on the income statement um, if they haven't yet been paid, are going to show up as liabilities. The accounts payable line shows when we have uh, expenses that have been incurred but not yet paid. Payroll, vacations, and taxes are liabilities that haven't been paid yet but are going to be paid in the near future. Uh, things like deferred revenue shows us things along the lines of those uh, season ticket holders that we talked about earlier. We've taken the revenue in, but we haven't actually performed the service for it yet. So once we do, we'll recognize that and remove that liability. But until we do, it helps us account for the fact that we have money come already in the system that we haven't performed our needed services for yet. Each one of these lines helps us really understand uh, where our total financial position is, what the future has in store for us, what the effects of the past have in store, and where those two things come together. Finally, of course, at the end of our balance sheet, we get a look at our net asset position. What are we worth when we take a look at all the assets we have and remove the liabilities and get a good sense of where's this organization's total position? This is really different in cash versus accrual accounting because we're looking at those liabilities that haven't been paid yet, but we're also including those revenues that haven't showed up as cash yet when we're figuring out our total position. It really helps us understand our commitments of the past and the impact on the future and not just what 